This is Ian P. Reports, a vodcast from Editor and Publisher Magazine, the authoritative voice of news media since 1884, serving newspapers, broadcast, digital, and all forms of news publishing. And greetings once again, Mike Blinder, publisher of ENP Magazine, housekeeping as usual, if you are listening to this series on your favorite podcast platform of choice, we urge you to follow us. Watching us on our YouTube channel, there is a subscribe button below me, there's a bell to the right. If you hit both of those things, not simultaneously, one before the other, you get an update each and every time we upload a new episode of ENP Reports. I have a friend on, someone I've, I've known for a while, I have a lot of respect for. And I'm really excited to introduce him to this audience, although you likely know him unless you've been under a rock. Guy Tasaka, welcome to ENP Reports. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak to your audience. And you've been a great supporter of me and everything I've been able to do in the industry. So thank you so much. I I, Guy has got quite a pedigree. I mean, I'm going to try to run this down, Guy, um, but anyone can go to your LinkedIn profile. But uh, you're obviously a a highly sought after consultant, digital strategist. You were the founder of Tasaka Digital that you've been, you know, keeping going like I kind of do, you know, where people want to get your help. But uh, uh, very recently, uh, very exciting that you were the uh, founding managing director for the Technology Resource Center of the local media association. Before that, you built your chops at some of the top media companies in the world. Uh, Gatehouse, head of mobile strategy, um, Calkins, uh, chief digital officer, 10 years at the New York Times in various research and strategic positions. Uh, Guy, you have recently also added to your um, LinkedIn profile that you are our new uh, tech columnist here at EMP. First of all, welcome on board. We're very excited. You've already filed your first piece, which we're going to break down in a few minutes. But um, thank you for joining us. My wife, who runs editorial, has been like going back and forth with you, emails and chats and all this. All she talks about is Guy's brilliant. He's got great ideas. Thank, <laughs> what, what is your motivation? Why did you come on board? Thank you. Um, I, I'm a huge supporter of local media. Uh, it's why I went to LMC. It's uh, I really didn't enter local media until I got to Calkins and um, really saw the value that it was providing for the uh, local communities. And now as we go through this transitional phase where we're struggling to find a business model, where we're trying to make technology work for us to, to forward the industry, you know, I love the opportunity to talk to your executive suite, to talk to senior management and really kind of demystify technology. It's not that hard. Business models are not that hard. If you really understand how the technology comes together and, you know, I've, I've done things that um, we actually really demystified a lot of tech and uh, paywalls, OTT, um, mobile strategies. It was very easy once you understand what the key revenue drivers are. In that. And make it understandable. So, you know, because not everybody is, is, is tech driven, understands every acronym. Your first task, which was a hard one, is we sent you to Vegas. You went to the largest um, show of, of, of broadcast professionals, the NAB, National Association of Broadcasters, 2023 show. I understand over 65,000 attended. It was huge this year. And your job, I mean, you already filed your first report, but we're going to put a little meat on the bone, is to break down your key takeaways for news publishing executives. And with your permission, Guy, we'll get to that on the backside of this message. This episode of ENP Reports is exclusively sponsored by Blocks Digital, formerly Town News. Even though the name has changed, their commitment to the media industry is as strong as ever. Blocks Digital is now even better positioned to deliver integrated solutions like content management, audience development, advertising revenue, video management, and more. Join the over 2,000 news publishers worldwide that power their ongoing digital transformation with Blocks Digital. Serving over 141 million monthly users who view over 6.5 billion pages of content each year. You can trust Blocks Digital to empower you, to connect you at scale with the community you need to reach. Blox Digital, formerly Town News, now reimagined to help meet the news publishing challenges of tomorrow and beyond. Learn more at bloxdigital.com. 
All right, Guy, you gave us three takeaways from the NAB. I want to start with those, and I want to get then your overall feeling of the mood there. So here you are in Vegas. There is hundreds of panels, events, a big show floor. Your mission was obviously to look at it through the eyes of the news publishing industry, who, and many likely attended the NAB. Um, your first one was all about broadcast quality. What do you mean by that? Why, why was that the first takeaway that you wanted to report on? Sure. No. Um, when I entered uh, the broadcast industry, I worked at a media company, Calkins Media, which was both newspapers and TV stations. The gap between what a newspaper could create or what a YouTube creator could create and what was considered broadcast quality, TV quality was was enormous. Um, technology in the broadcast world was incredibly expensive and was so much better than uh, anything prosumers had. Uh, one of the things that uh, that really stood out to me is how the gap has closed. Um, cameras, our iPhones are better than what broadcasters used, you know, five, 10 years ago. Exactly. Um, also in the broadcast world, equipment was incredibly expensive. So you think about um, cameras, um, playout servers, automation systems, um, they were hundreds of thousands of dollars. So most people probably in the newspaper world don't realize that Broadcasters buy equipment every five to 10 years and they amortize it over that period. A lot of them don't um, upgrade their software or upgrade their hardware. So as the world transitions into streaming, it becomes incredibly difficult for broadcasters to manage their legacy system into the new paradigm. So um, what, what I noticed, um, and I had seen this coming along, particularly as COVID came along, is the creator community is huge. Um, you know, the YouTube creators, the podcast creators, the uh, prosumer equipment started to get cheaper and better. And, you know, as, as I mentioned in the article, when we saw um, uh, American Idol finals, that was all done off of a smartphone and a ring light out of somebody's house. Jimmy Kimmel, um, Jimmy Fallon, they were all broadcasting with prosumer equipment out of their homes. So what we thought of as broadcast quality is really narrowed. Um, one of the things that jumped out at me um, several years ago, you would see broadcast, you would see um, newscasters or reporters doing standups with big lighting, lighting sets and, and big camera rigs. And I saw at several dozen YouTube creator, TikTok or YouTube creators walking around reporting from a corner or as they were by walking themselves, through without a, by themselves without a with right yeah holding it up was the... it was fascinating how the the creator the creator community and it, what's acceptable has changed well, well let me break this down then because this is what I because I I used to manage a TV station in the nineties and you're right the equipment we had in that room was massively expensive but we held the keys to the candy store no one else could do right. video like us. Right. So, but I always had to send a reporter and a shooter to do a story. And then there was that TV show, Max Headroom, if you remember, where the reporter went out on their own. Is the industry finally moving in a direction? I mean, talking about the regular broadcast, you know, affiliate news, where they may start just sending reporters out with their own equipment, you know, put up the tripod and start reporting so they can get more out in the field and get more stories covered? Or is it still oh, going to be that two team in the truck thing? No, I think uh, I think New York One pioneered um, single shooter um, uh, MMJs right. back in the the nineties. The equipment's just gotten much better. One of the things that's really interesting is um, I, as I was covering um, NAB for for you, I I was I was sitting in the press room, checking my emails, and I would see these international mmjs uh, multimedia journalists come in and they had equipment i had never seen before it, they had these tactical backpacks they had these things that look like um, an iphone on steroids but it was a single single reporter they were just shooting b-roll and 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 you know doing doing stand-ups and it was fascinating if anybody ever wants to see next generation next level uh, equipment Go to an international show like NAB, where you see the technology from around the world. But then go, it's, but then go to the press room and watch. They, the go, real they all go to the press room, especially around <laughs> around meals, especially be there during lunch and 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 breakfast, and you see the best equipment in the world. 
you know, I'm kind of a closet historian and I'm, and I'm always reading history and I watch history and I absorb it. One of the things I've learned over history is that crisis creates change or accelerates change, I should say, Guy. So one of the things I watched during COVID, pre-COVID, um, for me to get on Morning Joe or the Fox and Friends, they'd have to fly me into New York City, right? Put me up at a four-star hotel, limo me into the green room, right? Get me all prepped and I'd have to be on the set. Now it's okay to watch uh, someone interview someone in their living room with the cat walking behind them on the desk and everybody accepts it. Does this? Are we at a, a stage now where we don't have to have all the studio lights and camera in action to actually run a, a, a sincere local news operation? Should we just accept the fact that people are okay with interviews in any background, in any environment? 100%. I think that's what came out of COVID. I think acceptability, I think uh, authenticity, um, actually getting, I think somebody would rather see a, a, an, an event captured on a, a on an iPhone rather than a TV stand-up crew, a TV crew go and do a stand-up as the police was you know, we're, we're coordinating off the area. I, I, I think that's what we want. We want real time. We want authenticity. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for the, the, you know, the, the newspaper, the news media industry to really level the playing field. Guy, I want to move on to the next topic. You mentioned fast. You said fast was the second most important takeaway at the NAB. So, so for those of you who haven't uh, seen the article fast is an acronym for free ad supported streaming television if you're familiar with uh, pluto tv or tubi or, or st some of the other uh i'll call it uh cable like experiences that are available streaming you no longer need an fcc license to be able to reach a big audience um so th so the creation part is really leveling the distribution part is really leveling so um, there are a number of um, local broadcasters who are on these fast platforms. One of the the gotchas or the caveats or um, caveats, um, they can't distribute their uh, network programming. They don't have the rights to distribute their of network. Of course, because the network so, owns that, right? So they're creating these um, uh, channels with either replayed news or original content or licensed content, but they're. Um, their fast, uh, uh, your local affiliates fast channel is very different from their over the air. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm a local broadcast TV executive. Okay, let's let's assume I run a local TV station. I did that years ago in the 90s before this whole internet thing came out. Let's assume I'm watching, I'm watching the you know, my favorite Sunday morning show is a guy named Willie, you know, Geist. I don't know if you've heard of it, NBC Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the show, he always says, and make sure you're watching our app today. Peacock will have a game. I, if I ran the local affiliate, would I not throw my coffee cup at the screen and say, how dare you tell my audience to not watch my, my, <laughs> my, 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 my tower supported spectrum transmission signal and go i mean is that what this is all about with fast now or the tv stations are trying to get in the same place is it a battle now with the networks is what i'm saying yeah, that's, a, that's a that's a great question um i would be furious if i was a local broadcaster um um i think the biggest challenge to local broadcasters are fewer people watching live tv live so the, the mood there was rather than be fear streaming embrace it Correct. Is that what I'm getting from this year of the fast? We're not going to fear it. We're going to we're going to jump in there and have our own channels. Correct. They are um, some uh, some of the bigger stations. You look at scripts, you look at the next stars and Sinclair's. They're actually creating a lot of their own content. So, ah. you know, ex exclusive content to them, which is if you have the means, by all means. But what happens to the the long tail of family owns and, and some of the smaller ones? Um, I think there's going to be a lot of content available to to syndicate. A lot of the streamers have content. A lot of, um, you know, you you watch things on Hulu and you say to yourself, "I've never seen this show. How did I miss it the first time it was around?" It's probably because it was on Anna, Animal Planet Seven, or you know, it, there there's so many cable channels and there's so much great content that was missed the first time around. Of course. You know, that's an opportunity for for local local broadcasters and local media companies. And so if I was about, 
I'm sorry. So if I was a local news organization, rather I'm bro- okay. Let's 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 take this broadcast versus print away and just say local news. Mm-hmm. I should be thinking now of some kind of a hyper local content show. Is what you're thinking? I mean, and if I can start building that, I could find ways to stream it and get it out there. Correct. You have your audience. If you're a local media company, you have an audience. You have an established audience. Um, you have a very loyal audience. There's always going to be a need for local news and information. Um, media companies have come to me, newspapers in particular, and they say, can you give us um, kind of a playbook to get into video? Gordon Burrell says CTV is the hottest thing around. Yes. How, how do we get into it? And my my advice is always learn to sell video first. It, Learn to sell video. There's a lot of people who want you to sell their video. Second is learn to aggregate other people's video and build a video audience. Third thing, create your own evergreen lifestyle. And the last thing you do is create news. News Mm -hmm. has the narrowest appeal, is the most expensive, and has the shortest shelf life. But typically newspapers, when they say, let's go do video, CEO says, let's go do video. The newsroom takes it as license to go build a studio, create these vice-like mini docs, which and and a very and, and narrow audience. You're very right. narrow, and the sales guys go out and sell it, and overpromise and way under deliver, and they never get a second. Term. And then you so, and you hit you hit the most important topic that goes way back in both of our days in this industry: critical mass of content. Right? Everybody was building. Remember when we were all building directories? Absolutely. <laughs> but but there was nothing in there. I mean, if you're going to do video, do video, right? Collect it. Video. Get it. Collect it. Aggregate it. Right. Become the become the megaphone in the market. You don't need to create your original content yet. A lot Curated. of people want to borrow your audience. So let's get to the overall mood. I look at sure. broadcast as a an, a tremendous industry since I came from it, and I still serve it. But I also look at the challenges they have because the three major revenue streams. Now you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong because mm-hmm. you have a much more in, uh, knowledgeable base of the broadcast industry. But the three major revenue streams of the local affiliate. I'm not talking networks. Mm-hmm. Are number one retransmission fees correct? If the local, because they still own that local football game or that football broadcast, and if Hulu or someone is running it, not Hulu, but one of the channels like YouTube, they pay a fee to the local affiliate, correct? So I can have all the local channels and still broadcast local news. Number two is is political advertising, right? This is going to be, every time there's a political season, right? It's huge, right? Millions and millions and millions of dollars. Three is automotive. That's still an industry that puts a lot of cash into advertising and broad local broadcast TV. But I, when I read data about those last two categories, some of the things that Burrell is even predicting is they may go more into OTT, right? They may start moving more away from that local broadcast affiliate. How do you feel about the mood? I mean, was that, were they hyped? Were they happy? Was, was it, or it was like, cause when you go to, I want to say it out loud, when you go to a broad, a newspaper convention guy, you and I both know the mood ain't, that positive right it's like help me you know navigate these tumultuous waters was everybody just pumped there or was there a real sense of urgency to adapt and change i think there's a real sense of urgency uh understanding that the world is uh, what i sense is the world they all understand maybe they didn't understand two or three years ago that the world is moving towards streaming and that's really the biggest urgency i saw is getting their systems in place and be able to stream and monetize their streams. Three years ago, they it wasn't that urgent. Um, the, the The behavior wasn't established. The behavior is is there and real right now. Um, you had mentioned about OTT. OTT is targetable. Now I can I can target homes that are fence sitters. You know the pur- right. the purple homes as opposed to the red and the blue homes. But, um, you know, that was always the big, um, uh, the big fear that Facebook and its uh, first party data was going to take all the political advertising. We didn't see that happen in the, in the last election broadcast was still very, very powerful in, in its, um, ability to get political advertising. I mean, for awareness, there's nothing else, you know, this as a broadcaster, nothing else beats awareness than the TV. 
but that then OTT is TV in a way. And so you it is it's addressable TV. Go. So yep. then finally, where are we, sir? You have straddled that line. I'm not saying in a bad way, a good way. I mean, LMA, local media association. I'm a I'm a I'm a big believer in Nancy Lane. I did conferences with her for six years. Uh, but she basically decided to take that organization, which used to be suburban newspapers, as you remember in the old days, and turn it into one organization representing all local media. Meanwhile, you still have newspapers versus broadcast, you know, lobbying separately and all that. You're, you've been on all sides of this. You're a multi-platform person, which is why we're so excited to have you here at EMP. Is that going to change? I'm asking you now to put on your, you know, your your soothsayer hat. I want you to take out mm -hmm. your crystal ball and tell me what stocks to buy as well, guy, if you don't mind. But <laughs> where are we going? Will there be just just local media period, or will, will there always be that legacy history that you think that our industry is kind of chained to? That's a great question. I. I firmly believe that there will be, um, and I wrote about it in the past and spoke about it when I was at Calkins. Um, there's going to be a, there's going to be an omni-channel media company, single media company, single newsroom that's going to be able to distribute everywhere. And you know, I, I think the, I think generative AI, and we haven't spoken any uh, about that, is going to help close the gap, uh, because. One of the biggest challenges that we had at Calkins was we wanted our t our newspaper guys to be able to do video, our TV guys to be able to do long form, and fill in the gap. Generative AI can do all that right now, exactly. and and um, synthetic media and synthetic media is getting so good. Um, that's you know being able to take a TV uh, take take a piece written for newspapers and turn it into radio script, turn it into a, a video script. And synthetic media is actually taking it the last mile to actually be able to create the voice, the radio voice from the script, being able to take, create a, a broadcast avatar from a script. And it's I, I, I've done tests and I was able to do AI end to end from from piece of content all the way to a radio piece. And You're kidding. See, no, this... it's I'll send it to you after this call, but it's uh, I send it to people and I did it two months ago and the technology gets better month by month. It's frightening. Oh God, hour by hour, hour by just... hour. It's just difficult to keep up. And, you know, a lot of the CEOs and the senior leadership, it's hard to keep up. I mean, to get your head wrapped around it. And from a strategic standpoint, where do you go from there? Where do you invest? What are the opportunities? You see, this is exciting to me because I am a, my wife always accuses me of being too Pollyanna. I now believe more than ever that local journalism will survive because yep. people are now realizing it's a necessity in a Madisonian Republic. I mean, it's finally coming out when you have a news desert, the town falls apart, corruption grows, people stop voting. I mean, it's just an amazing world we're in now. So you said it when we started this interview 30 minutes ago, you said, there's always going to be need for local. You, you just did that as a given. There's always going to be, but you know, you got to understand Tofa was on the show and he basically said that the constitution says there should be an unfettered press, but it doesn't say we need one. You see, so we both are in agreement that there will always be that, that need for a school board to be watched, right? Mm -hmm. For a city council to be monitored for that voice, that independent unfettered voice. So then imagine what guy you just said, what imagine if that number three TV news operation and that local media newspaper come together and with AI behind it, all you gotta do is get one reporter, right? One huge one, just start the story. And before you know it, it's multi-channel cost effective. Did I sum it all up? Yep, that's absolutely it. Um, and the number number three or four TV station, the newspaper, they have an enormous audience and trust in the community, right? One, one thing I do wanna say in, in my observation and working with a number of media companies, it's, and I don't mean, and I, I work for media, a number of media companies, it's 10% technology and 90% culture, right? The technology is not hard to solve. It's really getting the technology getting the culture to embrace and adopt and it's the same at a newspaper as it is a tv station i always say if you can just get out of your own way there's so much success but it's yep. true 
this is exciting. This is just the beginning of many chats I know we're going to have. And I, I envision, I already know it's going to happen, that you and I are going to be interviewing other people that, about the tech world. But what I love most about you, Guy, I'm going to blow some smoke your way, is you got a good way of breaking it down so old people like me who don't know all the acronyms understand it. And that's going to be our vision here at ENP as we take technology, as you just said, which is really only 10% of it, and make sure that the people who are in control of news publishing understand the value of it and how to use it to have a sustainable business model. I pretty much got it. Is that it? Absolutely. You nailed That's it. it. Guy, welcome on board. Looking forward to working with you. Thank you for your commitment to the industry, and I'm looking forward to seeing your amazing work in the months to come. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it.